Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at The Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1 by Nick Spencer. So without further ado, let's take a look at this book. Here's the cover of the book that I went with, which has us in the direct line of sight of Spider-Man's web shop. It's also got one of the new villains introduced here in the background there, which is Kindred, who honestly has had like machinations throughout this run, but I guess the payoff must be in the second half of the run because there's really not much I can say about Kindred yet. Here is the spine of the book, which as you can see, it's a white spine and it's got a little image of Spidey swinging. And here's the back of the book, The Amazing Spider-Man, The Coming of Kindred, but like I said this probably builds up a lot of kindred stuff but the second volume must have all the like kindred interactions with spider-man and everything all right let's first go over what this omnibus collects so what is in here it is amazing spider-man the 2018 series number one through 43 and then there's also like these issues that come in between a certain storyline and it's like 16.hu 18.hu and 20.hu and it also collects amazing spider-man Full Circle, and material from Free Comic Book Day 2018 Amazing Spider-Man Guardians of the Galaxy. Alright, well, what is this run, and is it worth picking up? Well, first of all, it's a Spider-Man run, so naturally I think they make those pretty accessible to anyone who wants to get into the character, since he's one of Marvel's most popular superheroes, and there is a lot in here that builds on older things and ties up old loose ends, honestly, but just so you know, I'm not super big into reading modern Spider-Man. It's not that I don't want to, I just haven't had the opportunity really to yet. And you know, I'm an X-Men obsessed person, so a lot of my dedicated reading time goes to the X-Men and their many various books. That's all to say that I haven't read really any of Dan Slott's Spider-Man run or Superior Spider-Man or anything like that. And this run still made a lot of sense to me. Even, you know, in the beginning, they build off a little bit of Superior Spider-Man and that's kind of what propels Peter on a certain trajectory. But they do a really good job of giving you the background on everything and, and why this happened. In fact, this run almost maybe does kind of too good a job of giving you background information because they do this thing that you really only see in much older comics nowadays and it's like most of the issues, the beginning, will try to recap the last issue like very quickly and sometimes it's done in a clever way where it's like just internal monologue Spider-Man stuff but other times it's like I see through it and I'm like hmm you're just recapping the last issue which is is fine. It's just super noticeable in omnibus format because you're reading these back to back. But guys, I really, really like this run actually. I don't know how like back to basics it is, like I said, because I haven't read so much like modern Spider-Man, but it had a very strong feeling of being back to basics, you know, focusing on Peter Parker's life as he's this struggling young adult who's trying to balance his superhero duties with his personal life, you know, classic Spider-Man stuff, classic themes that makes him relatable and beloved in the first place, but Spencer also really expertly weaves in new challenges for Peter, and he's got this complicated relationship with Mary Jane that he's trying to work out. There are new and formidable villains, and there's old villains introduced in a new, fresh way. There's a lot of just intriguing, overarching storylines, and I was honestly impressed with how much was going on. Like, Spencer sets up so much throughout these issues, and sometimes you don't even notice it until these things come come to fruition. Spencer honestly is becoming one of my favorite writers. I just read the Captain America by Nick Spencer omnibus and now I read this and they're kind of two different types of books. One is more like political and witty in that sense and a little humorous. This is way more humor and heart I would say like witty dialogue, genuinely funny moments to lighten the tone but it also delves deep into Peter's emotional struggles and his vulnerabilities and we even get that from characters that are not Spider-Man, which is really, really good too. And it just creates this kind of well-rounded, engaging narrative that I think any fans of the character can appreciate. And my point in bringing up the Captain America run by him is just to say that I think Nick Spencer is a very versatile writer. And at this point, like, I will gladly read anything by Nick Spencer. I'll give it a try. So one of my favorite, favorite storylines in here, and probably one of the main storylines of the Omnibus, is a Craven the Hunter storyline called Hunted. And what this story revolves around around is uh, Craven has this plan where he is going to capture not just Spider-Man this time, but he's going to capture all the animal themed villains. And he actually works
works with an X-Men villain to do this and to create this kind of area where people can hunt down these characters. He collaborates with Arcade to do this. They're enclosed in the hunting ground that is Central Park and Spider-Man is there with a bunch of his villains and he's trying to navigate this because he's trying to stop, you know, Craven and Arcade and also Craven's son who is a part of this. But Craven has also sold these like kind of remote controlled high mech suits to all these rich people and so those rich people are controlling the suits and having them hunt down all the villains so spider-man's also trying to save his villains from dying and let me just say there are villains that die here and to my knowledge some haven't come back yet in any way and there's one of these issues that comes in between it's like one of those like 18.hu issues it might even be that one or 17 and it is from the perspective of one of these villains and it's so poignant and sad it made me really emotional there's a few issues in here that spencer writes from the perspective of other characters that are really really emotionally gripping and sad i know i've said it before because i wish it's something a lot more comics would do but also something that i really really appreciated that spencer did was he put a spotlight on a lot of the background characters and it's even like i just said like having issues that focus on characters that aren't spider-man makes the world feel more real within spider-man's book sometimes and so for example one of the ones that I loved in this omnibus was Boomerang, who is Fred Myers, a former baseball player turned supervillain, then is kind of trying to reform in this because he's working with Spider-Man, but he's also rooming with Peter Parker. I just really liked, you know, getting the opportunity to delve deeper into kind of this D-list, more comedic character. And don't get me wrong, he was really, really funny in this, but they also actually treated him like a real character. And I like when they can humanize these lesser known characters because not only is it kind of this reminder that everyone's got their own thing going on everyone's got their own story to tell but it also really does help grow Peter's character because his relationship with Boomerang like leads to these interactions with Peter that lead to moments of genuine camaraderie but also moments of vulnerability all right now I do want to give my one tiny critique of this omnibus and it is an artwork critique don't get me wrong, the artwork for the most part is really, really good. I do like Ryan Otley. I liked him on Invincible. But for some reason, I don't like vibe with the way he draws humans for Spider-Man. Like when he draws characters in their costumes, when he draws action, I really, really like that. But for me, the way he draws faces and people in general, I don't know, it takes me out of it for some reason. Maybe because they kind of all start to blend together for me. I don't know if anyone else experiences this when, you know, reading through this book, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. Umberto Ramos also does some artwork for this book and I love his artwork. It's just so good. He's got this awesome, really unique style that just blends together seamlessly with dynamic action sequences and expressive character designs and it just looks so good I love it he's got a really energetic feel to him and it sounds like I'm disparaging to Otley now because um, I'm complimenting Umberto Ramos so much but I do really like Otley it's just like there are certain instances when for example there's this moment where it's like a big full page of Craven and I'm looking at him and I'm like that's just a Viltrumite like that is so synonymous with Viltrumite now I don't know if it's because Invincible was like so powerful in its comic book cultural pool that I'm just instantly like, hey, Viltrumite. And maybe I'm just being unfair, but that's how I see it now. Now, I wouldn't let that dissuade you at all from purchasing the book because, like I said, the writing is stellar. The artwork still is stellar. It's just a minor issue I have with, like, the faces. But everything is really well constructed here. Everything looks really, really nice. And I think you will really enjoy the humor and heart of the story. So, guys, let me know. Is this one you've read? Did you enjoy it? Are you picking it up? I've also heard people don't like this run that much and it may be because something happens in the second half that undoes a lot of the hard work in the first half or just messes up spider-man lore stuff but the first half so far really really good all right thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and you have a great rest of your day